Hi everyone, it's Carolyn from True Crime Chat with Mommy Ramblings, and I'm here with an update in the Caleb Michael Wisnan case. Uh, you might remember the 32-year-old male is the father of little five-week-old CJ Wisnand, along with the mother being Angela Gardner. And you remember that crazy press conference where they didn't remember the last time they saw their child. They thought it was Saturday night, but then the next time was Monday when it was, he was at a Circle K gas station and reported the child missing. Then they gave that bizarre press conference and a short time after that, the baby's body was found and the father was charged. So let's take a look at what happened during those days in there because we've learned some horrific new details about what really happened to little CJ and why the charges are what they are. So let's let's go into this. So 32-year-old Caleb Wisnand is accused of killing his five-week-old son, CJ. Now, like I said, you might remember that bizarre press conference with Caleb and the infant's mother's Angela Gardner that they gave right before he led investigators to CJ's body. Well, the Montgomery County Sheriff's investigator, John Shepard, testified recently at a preliminary hearing before District Judge Tiffany McCord. So this is going to fill in some of those details that went on during this time. All right, so we have that Caleb takes the investigators to a rural area of N Finger Road in Lowndes County where they found little CJ dead. And the baby's mother, Angela, was also at the site with police. And the father, Caleb Wisnand, ran to her, hugged her, and said, I'm sorry. But let's go into the details a little further. So let's backstory. The investigation began on the night of Monday, May 10th, and it was about 10.49 p.m. You might remember that Circle K gas station on Wetumpka Highway in Montgomery County when Caleb makes a 911 call to report that his five week old baby is missing. So the officers respond to this Circle K and they notice something a little strange that Caleb has an infant car seat base. Now what that is, if you're not familiar, you have that little um, infant seat that snaps on and off of it. So you could take it, put it in the grocery cart or carry it somewhere. He only had the base, not the actual infant seat in the car. So that was a little strange, right? Then they viewed the surveillance footage, the CCTV footage for the Circle K. And they didn't see anyone take the child from that location. And what the video did show was that Caleb arrived at the store at 10.28 p.m., just around 20 minutes before he reported that there was an abduction. Okay. And a few hours later, investigators are putting out a missing child alert, and that's in the very early morning hours of May 11th. Okay, so Caleb told investigators that he left the house with the baby on Saturday night and he went to work on a friend's car. And then he said he went to work on another friend's car on Sunday. At one point, he told investigators that he left the baby with a friend. And he also told them that the wife of another friend watched little CJ while he worked on their vehicle. So he didn't have a specific timeline of any of this stuff, what he was doing on Sunday, which was Mother's Day, okay? The other thing is, remember the press conference and what he said, right? Didn't see 
the last time they remember the baby was Saturday night in the bed with them, remember? But by tracking his cell phone, investigators were able to graph out some locations of where he had been, okay, leading up to that 911 call. And the last time that they saw CJ alive going by these locations and then looking for any camera footage was at 12.43 p.m. on Monday. And that was at a Montgomery County Walmart that they saw CJ on the surveillance uh, footage. Now, of the locations that Caleb went to, as they saw on his phone, the one unusual location was Landis County. And he didn't tell investigators that he had been to Landis County right away, only when confronted with his cell phone data. And when he was, he said that he had made a drug run. Investigators also had video of Caleb withdrawing money from a bank, which he said was to pay back money he owed to his brother. In that video, Caleb was wearing a green shirt and blue jeans. But in a video later that day, after he returned from Landis County, he was putting gas in his vehicle at a shell station. And there was some interesting footage that happened there. The video showed that he threw away a Mickey Mouse pacifier and a child sock. And he threw it into the garbage can. And he wasn't wearing that green shirt that he was wearing earlier. He was wearing a red shirt now, okay? And he threw that green shirt away along with that Mickey Mouse pacifier and that child sock. Now, Shepard is feeling something is not too good here, right? Something's amiss. All of the items that Caleb threw away in that trash can were recovered, but the infant seat and the diaper bag for little CJ has never been found. Now, investigators say that Caleb's memory seemed spotty and he seemed semi-cognizant and he seemed erratic. He showed signs of sleep deprivation and he kept telling the investigator he was tired. So the investigators took Caleb to another room at the headquarters and they told him just take a nap. And he slept for six hours. When he woke, when he woke up, um, Shepard said he seemed more coherent. Okay. And then two days after little CJ's disappearance on Wednesday, May 12th, you might remember that he and Angela Gardner took place in that press conference, right? Where he said some weird things like, and I quote, I don't remember a lot, but I did remember I, I was breaking up, you know, with the cops. If anybody's got anything, any places that I could have gone, you know who you are. It was after that press conference that investigators recovered CJ's remains. And that's what we knew, right? We didn't know what was going on. Um, and then his father, Caleb, was charged in his death. Investigators requested that the parents hold that press conference to help them locate CJ. It was after that press conference that they interviewed Caleb again and he agreed to take them to CJ's body. He led them to that shallow grave. At one point, investigators said that Caleb told them CJ had been unresponsive when he left his brother's house and he tried to do CPR. When he couldn't revive him, he said he took his son's body to Landis County. Caleb said he buried the baby in a shallow grave after killing him by blunt force trauma. 
So he drives the investigators to this rural area of Enfinger Road in Lowndes County. And they do indeed very horribly find CJ deceased. Now, Angela was there, and when this is going on, Caleb runs to her, hugs her, and says, I'm sorry. John Shepard, Montgomery County Sheriff's investigator, and I'm going to quote him here when he's talking about what Caleb said on how the baby died. He said it was an accident. He had hit his head. And that again was said at that preliminary hearing. He went on to say that a short time later, Caleb looked at John Shepard and asked him to shoot him. At that point, John Shepard said they handcuffed Wisnan for safety precautions. When CJ's body was found, John Shepard said there were no obvious signs of foul play, but and this is, again, the reason that, remember, things changed once they heard more about from the medical examiner's office? Remember, this is why. Once the dirt was washed away at the medical examiner's office, there were visible injuries to this little five-week-old baby. Forensic pathologist Dr. David Redziski of the Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences testified that little CJ had a complex skull fracture to the right side of his head and it was one and three quarters to two inches long. He said the little baby also had bleeding over the entire surface of the skull as well as subdural hemorrhaging. And there was damage to his optic nerves and on top of that he had a broken right tibia. Poor kid. Okay, and then he concluded the only way CJ's death could be an accident is if the child had been in a severe car accident and he was unrestrained or if he fell from the fifth floor. He said this death could not have occurred from an everyday accident. And I quote, Radeski saying this, this is an acute injury and the child died within minutes of the injury. The judge ruled that there was enough probable cause to send the case to a grand jury for indictment consideration. The judge also issued a gag order in the case, which was requested by Caleb's attorneys and opposed by prosecutors. Angela Gardner was not in the courtroom, but Caleb's parents were there. And they communicated with Caleb through hand gestures. You might remember that Margaret Hope, CJ's grandmother, and Angela's mother gave a, an exclusive media interview to Al.com, and there she said the, that Caleb's, Caleb took CJ while Angela was asleep on the night of May 8th and then said she didn't get to have her son on Mother's Day or Monday. Angela's mother went on to say, Angela is a great mother and she is overprotect overprotective of her kids. She was so happy when she gave birth. I was there when she gave birth to the baby. I can't believe the SOB killed her baby. She said that Caleb knew he done killed that baby and he had to come up with some excuse. Caleb is being held without bail and that is the end of the update that I have now. It sheds a little more light on what happened in between the Circle K and you know the arrest. So that fills in some stuff with for us. What a poor little baby that had to experience that. Oh gosh, I don't know what is going on today, but it's horrible. Thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope you're having a good night. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.